Hi. Today I let me just move some of this junk out of the way. Today I'd like to present to you my fully autonomous car. I completely built this and programmed it from the ground up in three days. So it did not take very long to come this far. And this thing also works extremely well. It works really well. So now I can explain it to you. So here on the perf board we have an Arduino Nano and I use these in lots of my projects. So we have the Arduino Nano with an LED, a transistor to control the driving motor, lots of female and male connectors here which go to the servo and ultrasonic distance sensors that I use up front here and these are the ones that can calculate very accurate distances and they all send data into this little Arduino and the Arduino can interpret that data and tell the motor and the servo up front and the steering what to do. Don't know what an Arduino is? Well, think of it as a brain. As you walk to a wall, you use your brain to avoid the wall, unlike I'm doing right here. When you do encounter a wall, you use your brain, you turn around, and you can go the other way. So you can imagine these sensors are like your eyes, and this Arduino, the microcontroller, and the brain is what's actually receiving the data from the eyes and telling the car what to do. So that's why the... Um, oh, I'll fix that later. When this car sees an object, like my hand, the wheels will turn the other way to avoid hitting this object. And same for the other side. The front sensor is pretty much for emergency uses in a way so that when it gets too close to an object it will automatically stop and beep at you until you move it because well it, it doesn't have reverse I know it's a work in progress though these three headers on the circuit board are labeled A, B, and uh, that's supposed to be a C not an L A goes to sensor number A over here B goes to the sensor, center sensor over here and C which looks like L goes to the sensor over over here. And they all are attached to the pins on the Arduino respectively. And then this header right here is the main power. This controls the Arduino and runs all of the other components. And finally, the servo connects to this last one over here. And because the servo wire isn't long enough, I had to add a little bit of a jumper here to get from this connector directly from the servo all the way over here. And that also runs off the battery that's built into this car. The battery that's built into this car is actually not enough to run most of the components that's used. So, this little adapter right here is used to convert about 3.7 to 4 volts and step it all the way up to 5 volts. And all of the other components, most of the components, run on 5 volts, which can be used to run the entire car probably wondering well it's why this thing looks like it's one wheel drive well that's because it is one wheel drive I know I know I get the criticism but it's the only thing I could do at the time I'll probably upgrade it in the future well great job you made it through the science boring junk now we can actually see it in action and action action Whoa. Come on. Ugh. Oh, yeah, I just gotta connect the servo wire. Oh, there we go.
there's only one problem with this. So, this sensor right here goes under our cabinet. This is our cabinet here. So it sees under our cabinet. That's a problem. It needs to see it over our cabinet in order to avoid it. So, if the sensor was up here, then it would be easily able to avoid these objects. But because it's down here, it sometimes tries to drive into here without knowing that it's gonna get stuck and that it's way too tall. So, if it's up here, it will know, oh, I can't go there. And it will e easily be able to navigate through here without getting stuck nearly as much as it does. And it doesn't actually get stuck that often. Oh yeah, one more cool thing I meant to add was that when this thing gets too close to an object, it will automatically stop. For instance, we have our wall here. Actually, this one. So when it drives up to it, it automatically stops, and this little buzzer here will beep at you until you move it to somewhere where it isn't going to get stuck. And yeah, it's a cool, but also extremely annoying feature. So, if I just turn it, it continues on its way. Okay, back to the point. I need to figure out how to make these sensors taller so that they don't get stuck under cabinets. Now, into the montage. And look at that, much taller. It's gonna be way better. I'm actually gonna wait to put the other one higher because I wanted to make sure this will still work. Let's go test it. Nope, I guess it needs to be taller still. Let's fix that. As you can see now, the sensor is tall enough to see the cabinet, which should make it much better at avoiding objects. Yay! Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.